just saw the dress move, man. Are you kidding me? I swear, I heard clear as day. And then... No, man. I didn't, I even, swear I, I didn't hear anything. Life, Chad. Oh my god. Oh my god, Chad. Oh man. Oh, it's flying, man. Oh no, it's flying. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Chad. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Things are wrong. I'm freaking out right now, Chad. I do not know what to do right now. Dragonites, as the summer of drag comes to an end and fall approaches, we're here in Oregon, Illinois, a small town of a couple thousand people about 45 minutes out of Rockford at Conover Square. This old piano factory turned mall is getting quite the famous reputation for being a local haunted site. So of course the Dragonites are here to investigate it. Our investigation began with a beautiful sunset drive along the Rock River to Oregon, Illinois, a town of less than 4,000, about 30 miles away from our stomping grounds of Rockford, Illinois. Of course we needed to stop and get the Greg ghost hunting snack of choice, Dots. And then we were on our way. We saw the Black Hawk statue watching over the river. We knew we had arrived. Oregon is a town with a lot of history, and that can be seen in the shape of one of the town's biggest and most historic buildings, Conover Square. This unique shopping village was originally a piano factory, but now houses local businesses. If you're ever in the area, stop in and have a cup of coffee, grab some freshly baked goods, and maybe buy some antiques or many of the other things that are available at the array of local businesses. Well, the Dragonites were in the area, so we decided to stop in and do what we do best, investigate Grag over Square. People have tons of different theories and explanations for the paranormal activity that they might encounter. People back in the day maybe said it had to do with the moon and the full moon or their ancient ancestors talking to them. A lot of people have uh, blamed electromagnetic activity or electricity running through buildings. Some people have even just blamed old buildings for being creaky and loud and making noises. Another theory that a lot of paranormal investigators have come up with is the presence of flowing water. And we're standing right here in front of the Rock River with Conover Square just right there. And you never know, the passage of all this water mixed with the history of this building, all the people that worked here and even the people that died here, it might be a way for their energy to manifest and show itself to us. It's just one explanation for why there might be paranormal activity. You make up your own mind about what ghosts are. Drag team has investigated tons of different types of places, from garages to asylums to cemeteries to houses, but this has to be one of the biggest. It's a giant factory with tons of twists and turns. There's a good chance in the dark we could get lost, but we'll keep the investigation going no matter what. Now as you can see, Conover Square is a huge old factory. They used to build pianos here. Now it's used for a mall. A lot of local shops, restaurants, and things like that are in here. But it definitely still held on to its factory roots. And you can easily tell that it was one time a factory. 
It's very old now. It's very creepy and we've got a lot of ground to cover. But it's getting dark and the Greg team's ready to investigate. As the daylight faded and nighttime set in, the anticipation continued to build. But before we would tackle this building on our own, we got a tour from Mike Grasso, the head of Haunted Conover Square Ghost Tours and a local shop owner at Conover Square. Um, now, on this, uh, this part of the building, we have three stories and we're on the first floor here. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are obviously two above us. For the most part, the third floor is unoccupied. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some storage up there. So uh, like tonight, other than us, actually throughout the whole building, it's not likely we'll hear anybody, but especially from the third floor. So if you do hear anything up there, it's not one of us. <laughs> it won't cool. be one of us doing it. So the third floor, is there a lot of action up there usually? Or? We haven't been up there a lot. No. We'll hear a lot coming from the third floor and we're not there. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, uh, about three weeks ago, we were up on the second floor, just uh, on the other side of that landing there, mm -hmm. and we heard, we, we just finished walking up there and we heard a crash come from the third floor, oh, wow. like a boom, and a few seconds later, another boom, and there was a, a group of ladies and a couple of them, you know, clutched <laughs> onto one another, they were like, are you serious? Like, that's what we hear sometimes. <laughs> And then we started hearing a sound like a uh, cart being pushed across the floor. Boom, oh, boom, wow. boom, boom, boom. Almost like somebody had two boxes, heavy boxes there, boom, loading onto a cart. Boom, get the second one on, walk behind it, and start boom, 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 pushing across the wooden plank floor. That's creepy. So, yeah. That, there's no reason for anybody to be up there. Absolutely right? not. What are some hist historic points of the building? Like, uh, when was it opened? And it was a piano factory at first, right? Right. Uh, in the early 1890s, I'm still trying to establish exactly when it was sure. built. We're pretty sure that by about 1910, the, the building stands as it is today, at least the exterior of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it manufactured pianos up until about 1969, 1970, shut down for a short time, mm -hmm. uh, reopened for a couple more years in a limited run, and by about 74, 75, they were done. In 78, then it would reopen as a mall. Wow. So we'll make a, a zip around this way. Uh, like I said, the, the second floor in, the, in the, the hallway area is pretty lively. And it just, I just keep hearing a weird uh, noise. They just, they, they, we're the air's already, we're just on the floor. <laughs> well, I, I actually, before, before, it was about seven o'clock, I thought I heard something from coming up. From upstairs. Wow, so it's already. Yeah, when I was in the store, me. yeah, and I went out. Nice. It's so a good sign. I, I took my recorder up and I came back and listened, and there's nothing. Oh, but wow. I figured, well, okay, we'll give it a try. But it's our kind of guy. Right? <laughs> we have had drag tours with people that are total skeptics and not into it. Oh, no. Mike we here. He, he's alone in the building and he grabs his recorder and goes. That's, that's what we're talking about. Let's come about. out there. So, um, you fully believe that there is paranormal activity here? I do. What. What made you believe? What instance, how long ago, what happened that you were like, yep, there's definitely an activity here? Well, there's always part of me that wanted to believe. Sure. You know, you, I think that's part of it, definitely. You get into an old building like this, you know, 120 years old, you start hearing stories about this happened, that happened. But everybody has those stories. A lady came in and she said, this place has ghosts, you know. I said, oh, please, tell me why you believe that. And she had been down to the hall we were going to go to next. She was waiting for a store to open, and she would have walked down in a hallway where no other stores were open. And she could see a reflection behind her down the hallway where, from where she'd just come. And she saw a man sort of peek out down the hallway like, oh, there's somebody there, and pop back into the store. And she turned around. And of course, all the doors were closed. Nobody was anywhere in the hallway. Sure. We, we've had a, a couple psychics come through. Oh, yeah. um, one in particular has been through many, many times. She just feels like this place is bustling with activity. Huh? Yeah, especially this spring when the water is really high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we went into the basement one time, and there was so much noise. I was almost ready to call the police. 
because I thought there was an intruder down Jeez. there. And that could be part of the reason why this building has a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. The psychic also mentioned that um, this building, because it's so old, so large, kind of an icon, it's almost like a magnet drawing in sure. the, the, the spiritual energy. You know, that, and on top of this land, too, this land has such a huge history with, with, with the natives who have been in the area. Mm -hmm. I found a, a newspaper article less than a mile downstream, a uh, Indian burial mound got washed out during the spring thaw wow. or in, in the floods. Mm -hmm. And these are their bones all over the place. We have, you know, a handful of antique shops, the museum upstairs, all types of stuff you'll see in the basement. If there's any attachment to those things, I mean, we've got, we, we've got a whole lot of reasons. Sure. I mean, any one of which could be a valid reason then, why this place so is haunted. Really, in a way, this building is very much could be a perfect storm for reasons why <laughs> right? there could be a presence here. Now, down here. Is where we thought we heard the noise noises that night going and the doing noises were in the so back. loud and so oh, yeah. real that it you really thought somebody was in here yeah when we leave this room coming down the ramp often the last person in line will feel something like a hand on their back <laughs> no, not, not really pushing but yeah, just like a guide of. kind of thing now this back here is the only functioning freight elevator in the building and it's possible that a repairman fell and died in this shaft We've got a couple noises on uh, EVPs here, mm -hmm. but no voices yet. Okay. There's a uh, electric room here. Some people are calling that the fear cage. There have been some some folks who just feel really uncomfortable going in there. They don't want anything to do with the place. It's feelings of dread. Yep. Yep. Like I don't. I, sh cage. I shouldn't be here. Fear I shouldn't cage. be coming in. Um, other people just walk in and go what. <laughs> yeah, it's sure. nothing. It's no big deal. Well, I'm sure we'll be terrified then. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Chad, you're staying in the fear cage all night. <laughs> the museum, you usually get the most bang for your buck there. Okay. Uh, but the, the third floor is a hit and miss. Sometimes people feel just really uncomfortable, really creeped out, shouldn't be up here. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's behind me, somebody's watching me. I feel like somebody's trying to pull my arm, that kind of thing. Uh, but also, people get that feeling a lot in the museum. Now, just about anywhere on the second floor is a good place to set up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, you, you, we've had stuff happen all over the place. The uh, gates down there, some people say they've, they've heard them shaking. And somebody took some pictures, said they caught a face through the gate. Like it's like a guy who's like trapped in there and wants to get out somehow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, th this generally is a pretty neat spot. And, and sometimes it's the creep factor in here. I'm, I'm a little creeped out as we're standing here, honestly. <laughs> of course you're telling well, me ghost tours, but <laughs> That helps. This, uh, is neat. this is an antique mall here, and actually one of the fellows who's with us now used to be up here, and he's, he has a, rents a space in our, in our store. Mm -hmm. He said he was in here one time, and there was a, a, like a doll in a crib, and it wasn't hanging over the edge, it was laying back in the crib, and it was between him and some teenagers who were walking by, the doll flipped out at the cage, or the, not the cage, the, uh, the crib, flew out, hit the floor. And, you know, he looked at the kids and they looked at him and they're like, we didn't do it. He's like, I know you didn't, I'm leaving, bye. <laughs> and he, he, he was gone. And once in a while, we hear these just enormous crashes. Not like the ones we heard down there, but like building shaking crashes. Uh, the owner ran into that too. He's, a, he's an engineer. He's had this building for 10 years. He knows the ins and outs of it. He's seen and heard everything. He cannot explain these crashes. He heard six or eight of them one night. But uh, my pants. here we go into the museum. So how did the museum come to be? I, I don't know the entire story behind it, but I know sort of the deal is... Uh, how did the museum come to be? I, I don't know the entire story. <laughs> This is very spooky. It is yes. very spooky. Some nights you walk in here and you can you, you can just feel your breath being taken away. There may be the spirit of a young girl up here. There's a this, this young girl named Hannah mm -hmm. who was seven years old and she died at a, a, a hospital nearby and sort of found her way in here. Now she likes to reportedly hang out on this little settee here. Her name's Hannah. Hannah. This dress right here came here just about a year ago and we believe there may be 
a lady attached to it. Did you it. hear that? We definitely heard a noise back there. Yeah. That was creepy. <laughs> I saw you whip around. <laughs> oh, man. So here we go. Get used Something to it. There is a, uh, people have described her as a, a school marmish type of lady, very tight, her hair pulled back. Mm -hmm. um, not real nuts about too many people being up and around here. Mm -hmm. And uh, two people have seen him, at least two people have reported the apparition independently of each other and both gave a pretty accurate description. Uh, it says that she kind of watches over Hannah. A lot of people say though they get creepy feelings in this room, the military room. <laughs> I'm so creeped out right now. <laughs> <I didn't laughs> out. They, they say there's a fellow upstairs, uh, a former, former, some type of naval mm -hmm. officer who um, is very protective of this area. Mm -hmm. There will be somebody saying, I'm, I'm uncomfortable to the point of being sick. I, I have to get out. Mm -hmm. And as they leave, they'll hear footsteps above them following them. We were doing an EVP session sitting here. There were three of us. And that uh, one of the cabinets right along there, they're catching a reflection in the window from it. Mm -hmm. You know, just the light coming in. Mm -hmm. Well, once in a while, it would block out. Ooh. So when it ended, we got up and we're trying to replicate where would you have to stand to block the light out the way it was being blocked out? And the answer was right in between those two windows. Almost as if whoever it was didn't want to be seen mm -hmm. and they were hiding in between the windows oh yeah. and watching. But that's, uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all, yeah. <laughs> all 120,000 square foot, said. Yeah. All right, Ragonites. You ready to do this, man? I'm ready. Let's it's 11 o'clock it. and the investigation begins. We're not quite investigating yet. We're gonna go set up all of our equipment, but we want the cameras rolling at all times. That was me. In this hallway, we're just gonna set up the uh, grad camp. It's a hallway full of old pianos. Um, and Mike told us there was some activity up here. So we're just gonna leave this camera running. Mike explained earlier that there was uh, some sort of presence that would be in between these two windows here. Did you want to maybe set up one of our motion sensors over here? Yeah, did you want to do that or in the museum? Well, we got two of them. Oh, yeah. So. Sure. That's the sound we'll hear if something triggers the motion sensor throughout the building. So that's one of the motion sensors. We have another one, and we're going to set that up, we think, in the museum. This is the number two sensor, so Travis will actually be holding number one. So if that goes off, we know that it's upstairs here in the third floor. Now we're going to head down to the basement and start our investigation there and then work our way up. Now, Mike did say during his tour that Hannah, um, well, the woman hangs out there by that dress. Hannah likes to hang out in this couch and this, uh, this sort of area, so it might be a good place to put the other motion detector. Is that on? Is that the other one? Yeah. Is that the motion detector we just put upstairs? Oh my god. We just put the other motion detector upstairs on its own and turned it on. We are coming down here to set up the other one, but it's not on right now. So that means something upstairs in the middle of the night in a place that's closed to the public just moved and crossed up there. Right where he said that that spirit interacts with right where he said a spirit seems to linger at first i was it like, went off twice too man. i know that means that something passed in front of our motion sensor twice or just stood in front of it this one is number one you can clearly i i made mention that it was number two this is number two number two went off and that's okay. the one we just left upstairs this is number one that was definitely the one There's something setting that off up there, Chad. It's still going, man. There's something moving up there, man. 
Oh my gosh. Oh man. Do you want to go up there, Chad? I think we gotta. Let's go up there. I think we gotta. Let's go up there and try and interact with it or something. Dude, it's flipping out. Something is like hanging out up there. Look at that, man. Chad, look at me, man. It's going off. Chad, we've set this up in many other places, man. And it's never, we usually never get anything with this. We usually never get any movement with this. And it's going off, man. Something is up there. Down there, where those two windows are. In between those two windows is where our motion sensor is set up. We're up here, it's not making any noise, but when we were down just one floor below it, it was going off like crazy. And now it just, it's completely stopped since we've come back up here. We're rolling. Is there a presence up here? What is your name? Can you pass through our sensor again? Do you want us to leave? I just don't understand why it would go off so many times and then now it's not doing anything. It's like something was right by it and then something left. I, I'm getting chills, man, really bad. Are you? Yeah. What are you feeling, man? I don't know, man, I'm getting like really bad chills though. You have goose oh man. Look at your goosebumps, dude. I'm getting like really, really bad chills. You think something's here? Is there something around me right now? How you feel, Chad? You still have chills, man? I feel like it's going down now. Like I'm not I'm I'm losing it. Chad, man. I have to keep reminding myself that we're like here to capture this stuff, man. Right. I have to keep reminding myself that we're in a locked building right now and it's safe. Right. You know what I mean? I have to keep <laughs> it's like, as soon as that thing started going off, man, I wanted to, like, Leave. run away. As you can see, this area is not open to the public. So, this is a drag team exclusive. Over here to the left, Jay, mm -hmm. this is the fear cage. As I think that's it. where we need to set it up at. Now, Chad's setting up our motion sensor camera, which will take pictures of anything that moves. This area back here is referred to as the fear cage by Mike. He called it that because people feel just full on feelings of, of dread and, and fear. And so many people have gotten almost sick to their stomachs that they get so creeped out back there. While we were down in the basement, the Greg Vision 3000 was upstairs recording the whole time. Now we caught a few strange things on tape and we'll replay them for you now. To the left, right by the piano, we catch a mysterious orb flash. Here's a replay. Minutes later, we catch an orb float and then shoot away down by the floor. Here's another replay. Just a few strange things we caught on tape. All right, so we're getting out the uh, classic Greg tool, the Avalis X. Always uh, gives us something creepy. Well, not always. Maybe. It will catch EVPs in real time, and then using its multi-thousand word database, it will um, respond with whatever word it just picks up in the atmosphere. A little later, we were walking through a first floor hallway and the glass creaked at us. The Avalis was still running and gave us an eerie response. Sometimes it just feels like there's nothing. It just feels like it's empty, but then it'll just pick up out of nowhere. Oof, that's creepy. Okay. We just walked by this glass and it creeped and made a noise. And I went, ooh, that was creepy. And then as soon as I said that, it said glass, as if it knew what had happened. Music. You like music? Well, we are in a piano factory.
the date today? Today is September 1st, Chad. And the Avalis just told us music. We are on a piano factory, and it also said the word September. Today is the first day of September. Anything else? Can you tell us anything else about... Did you hear that? What was that? Can you tell us anything else about... 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 We heading upstairs? Yeah. I think that's where we're going to get the bulk of our stuff at. I think so, for sure. What was that noise we heard when we were down here? Man, I don't know. That was loud. I feel like we need to make something happen right now. You just want to start talking to a man? You want to run a test? What do you want to do? Did you knock against the wall? No. Did you hear a knocking? Yeah. Where from? Like right here. Did you knock against the wall? Can you do it again? Can you shine the light around here real quick? What's wrong with I don't know, man. I, like I was, I was kind of looking in here because I feel like there's something in there that kind of looks like like a person standing. So I was like, my eyes were peeled on it, mm -hmm. and then I, I felt something touch against my neck. Like what? Like something touched me on my neck right here. That's why I wanted you to shine the light to see if there was like a bug that hit me or something. It was so real that I touched my neck to make sure there wasn't like a bead of sweat that dropped on my neck. And it sucks because there's no way for me to like prove that that happened, but I felt it. Is there something in here? We need a, a real sign. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. What did it sound like to you? It sounded like something scurried. Yeah. Is that you, Hannah? And are you in here? Oh, what? What, man? I don't know, man. I thought I saw something crawling. I thought I saw something crawling towards us. I don't know, man. I feel more like dread than I ever have in this place right now. Like Anna, some... are you in here right now? Give us a sign. What about the woman with the dress? Yeah, where are you at? You like that dress? You mind if we uh, take it? I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna touch it here. Is that your dress? Did you like when I touched the dress? Tell me. Can you give us a sign? I just saw the dress move, man. Are you kidding me? Like, it was subtle. I've been staring at it though for like the last minute, man. And every now and then it just seems, I don't know if there's an airflow or something, man, but it just kind of like swayed just a little bit. Did you move the dress? Did someone move the dress? I can't get over staring at that dress, man. I feel like I saw it move, man. I'm almost certain of it. Hi, Greg and Ice, it's after 1 a.m. The Greg team is tired. We just put in a thorough investigation of this 120,000 square foot building. Had some creepy things happening. And uh, I think it's safe to say there's definitely some paranormal activity happening in this building. It, uh, it seems to be the perfect storm of paranormal activity with the river, the burial grounds, all the people that worked here, all the people whose lives were affected by this major building in the community. The Greg team looks forward to coming back and investigating it again.
Thank you.